Yo guys, what is up and welcome to another video. Okay, in the last video we were testing out the, um, the steering design. So we were using this robot arm piece and a couple of gears here. Um, it sort of did the job. Uh, we could tell that there was a decent amount of power. So after that, um, I ordered myself a new 3D printer. So we'll just run over this quick. It's a Creality Ender 3. Um, we got, we got the roll, uh, roll holder at the top. Uh, it's not too bad. Uh, this one, the platform moves instead, and also it's a removable platform. So to get the parts off, all you've got to do is unclip it and then bend it, and it pops straight off. No pulling or nothing or anything like that. Um, it's got quite a nice user interface. Um, it's got you control everything with this dial here. Um, at the moment, I'm powering it. Well, not powering it. I'm running it using a memory card, which is a micro SD card. Um, no problems so far. Well, apart from there is a little, little issue with the Z-axis. Um, it seems to be a common fault. They just tell you to print out a little modified part, but to be honest, I don't know how you're supposed to do that if your printer's not working. So, well, I did dump a piece of cardboard in there, a little piece of plastic. And also I've put a spring here just to sort of help support this side. Right, okay, so that's it, that's with the printer. So you can see how I can get back on with making stuff again. So, right, where were we? Right, we were talking about the steering clamp. So, okay, so we did it all with a robot arm. That worked okay. Uh, don't need that. We was gonna be using one of these controllers. Um, in that last video, you could see the motor's running really, really slowly, so. Uh, it turned out these speed, these speed controllers are really crap, so I recommend don't use them unless you're using them for something like a really small, weak motor. Um, okay, so we're going to Right, anyway, I connected it up to the, straight up to the battery and there was loads of power. I could hardly even hold it, like, say I was trying to hold the wheel and turn it and it was, it was really, really strong. So, they're going to be fine. Right, so this this was the design. So we've got a motor, it's bolted inside. It's a dual shaft motor, so as you can see looking inside, you've got the two gears there. And obviously those gears line up with these gears. Like that kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's difficult to show you. These are the wrong sort of gears. Um, anyway. I thought I'd do a video today because we're starting to make some progress and it seems to be going a little bit faster than expected. Um, so yeah, uh, this is where we're at so far. Right, so we've got the chassis, we've got all four wheels on it, we've got all four wheel hubs. We even started making extra pieces just to sort of the rest of the chassis. You know, they're only little 3D printed brackets, but you know how heavy a hoverboard motor is? That's holding the weight of half a hoverboard motor. Um, also, I've put this on the floor and I've stood on these bits with my weight, I weigh about uh, 10 and a half, 11 stone. And yeah, that seemed okay. I mean, it can support a human's weight, which is pretty cool. Right, so let's go back onto the steering parts. Right, so they're looking quite tidy, as you can see. Um, we've got the gears there. So this is the bit we didn't have on the test piece. We were just using these big blue bits here. So we're gonna be, well, you see we've got those bits there. Um, everything lines up, it's nice. I mean, the, the wheel hub is deliberately on a, I think it's a five or a two and a half degree angle. And then also this part here, that's on a two and a half or a five degree angle. Either way, they both cancel each other out. But what it does, it gives an extra 10 millimeters of ground clearance in the middle, which I think it's worth it. And also, if I plan to put suspension on here, it'll help with that too. So like, um, if they weren't like it, and the angle was like less than that, there would be a negative camber on the wheel, so it'd be like that, which isn't what you want. Ideally, you want camber like that. Uh, I think it gives more, like, more grip, more power, more strength, more, more everything. Okay, so these uh, these little wheel hub parts, they, they have developed slightly um, over time, as time went on. And I was printing them out and figuring out better ways. Uh, the first thing you have to fix is the way the cables are, because they're going to end up getting munched in the gears. Um, I've also figured out how to mount a potentiometer onto here as well, if I can find one. That's the bracket, so it's a lot of space there, clips on top. Uh, where is it? Here we go, right, here's one here. <clears throat> so, how this works is that screws into these two holes, da, 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 them two, 
and then the end of the potentiometer stick can go in there. I'll stick out a little bit. And there's a, a gear here, which is screwed onto the shaft of the wheel. So there's the wheel turns, the gear turns. And then where the potentiometer is, this gear will fit nicely on the potentiometer. And that'll go on there. That'll go on there. And then we've got the potentiometer mounted onto the wheel hub. And then obviously as it turns, it's going to turn the potentiometer. See, just like that. Right, so um, at the moment I'm just pinching out another one of these because not all of them have got these holes. I might just get the, the hand drill and just drill some holes in these just to save wasting them and just, it doesn't seem much point in printing something again just for the sake of having an extra hole in it. Especially when the prints take about three and a half hours. Right, so anyway, next part, next bit I was just about to do just before I decided to make the video. Um, the steering motors are right. So you can see it, it's just all, it's all happening now. Everything's starting to come together. Wheel sensors, wheels, steering packets, chassis, you know, there's not really a lot to do now before we can take it outside. So I printed out all the gears ready, popped them all on. So these are all good to go. So yeah, the um, the original one, this one here, it's a 12 volt and what is it? I can't remember. Uh, 60 RPM. Okay, these ones are 24 volts and 80 RPM. So they should have more power and more speed than the one that we tested. And all, all four of them are exactly the same. I bought them all at the same time from the same guy. Um, all the gears as well. Uh, I printed them all out eight at the same time. Obviously the, the top and the bottom ones are mirrored so the teeth match up perfectly. And that is the same with the gears for this, for the steering. So you can see we've got a top and a bottom gear. Uh, those go onto these top and bottom gears. So that's gonna go inside there, like, like that, okay? Just like how that one is. Okay? Right, so I'm gonna try and get that done today. Um, speed controllers, we're still using the flips, guys. I got three of them so far. One of them needs wiring, and I've got another one on order. Um, I've got a four-way controller for these, so they can all get controlled with the same board. Um, power for this is 36 volts, and these motors are only 24 volts. So I've also got a, a voltage converter, so that's gonna change it from obviously 36 to 24. So that's good. And what else, what else, what else? Um, yeah, I, I think that's it. So what I'm gonna do is try and get the steering working and then I'm gonna make an Arduino, hook it all up, uh, get some steering controls and obviously all the steering sensors on each one. And we also need to have a platform here for all the stuff to go on. <clears throat> so I got a couple of options, right? Option number one, get a piece of wood, stick it on there, screw everything to a piece of wood, and there we go, job done. But I think that'll be a bit kind of, you know, spend so much time doing the rest of it and then you just wreck it by sticking a piece of wood on. So I don't know, I'm thinking maybe like individual enclosures for different stuff. So say the battery, that could be in like a special box, which screws onto this stuff here. You know, I'm thinking modular. So I could print out two battery boxes, battery box, battery box, and one on each end. Um, some kind of box for the, some kind of box for this controller. Now again, kind of screw in here with some sort of T-slot mount bracket. Um, yeah, I, I think that would be really handy for like future projects and say if we change the design at some point. Um, yeah, separate compartments. But I think either way, at the very least, I'm going to be getting a big thick aluminium plate to stick on the bottom, um, just to protect it from rocks and curbs or anything like that. So I'm not sure where, we, where we're going to drive it yet or even where it's going to go. I suppose it's just like, take it out and if it goes, then great. So anyway, I'm just going on about nothing at the moment. So if you enjoyed the video, 
don't forget to press like and if you want to see this thing when it's when it's a bit more complete subscribe and that's it I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and come back and watch the next one